right, today we're gonna talk about my TBR for March, which is pretty exciting. I got pretty pumped when I was putting the list together. I'm kind of very excited about a lot of books and I don't know how many I'll get to. Getting into more of a groove. I do have a spring break, which will still be used to prep a lot of work for class and I'm gonna be seeing some friends, um, which is why I'm gonna be bulk filming some things. So we'll, we'll see how that goes because I'm gonna go out of town for just a little bit. Uh, you know, nice escape from reality if you saw. My recent Friday reads, I'm not gonna get into that. We're gonna talk about books, really fun books. And we'll start with the sort of obligations, continuations of series. And then like at the end, per usual, be like, listen, this is a pile of things that as of right now on like February 29th, I'm kind of interested in. And who knows what will be added, taken off, etc. as we get through the month. So starting off, um, my patrons helped me pick from the arcs that I have which one that I will at least prioritize. I think I want to get to a fair few of my arcs this month just because I'm interested. That's why I requested them. Um, I'm one of those people that's actually pretty good at not being overwhelmed by my net galley or anything like that. Like, I usually try to request the book that I know I'll read, like, pretty much right when I get it, or that I know I'll read eventually, and then I can, like, you know, even if I accidentally read it really late, I can go put in <laughs> the review. So I'm pretty good at that. Um, and one of them is the new Robert Jackson Bennett, and that's The Tainted Cup. And actually, they reached out to me eons ago. Like, this was a book that they were trying to push forward, like, last summer, I think. And it came out in January. So they were really pushing. This is one of their bigger books, which he is, I think, I think this is Delray. Delray is, I think this is one of the bigger fantasy authors. It's like Naomi Novik and him. I don't remember if there's any others. I'm probably forgetting some big names. So ignore me. Regardless. Founders Trilogy did pretty well, and so I think they're pushing this. And I've loved all the books I've read by Robert Jackson Bennett, so I was really excited when this is what won, won the poll. And yeah, I think it'll be one of the next things I pick up, honestly. I don't know if I'll need an audiobook. If you haven't noticed, physical reading in my brain has been, like, hard. I get really tired, <laughs> and so it can be hard to, like, focus on the page. And I'm working on my anxiety, but anxiety also doesn't help with the focus. So we'll see, but his prose style is usually pretty good for me, especially, like, I've been able to read him in the past when I've had really bad mental health. Because it just kind of flows and it's really engaging, and even if it's never, like, a favorite of all time, I'm very invested. And so far, what I've heard, the reviews are pretty good. The only thing that always has me kind of nervous about his works is, like, I'm not a mystery girly, and he almost always has, like, a mystery subplot or a heisty subplot. But considering that's a thing with all the books I've read from him, and I've liked them all, it should be okay. Um, and then our buddy read, and this goes towards one of my goals, if I'm going to at least pick up one of the books on my TBR, is To Like the Lightning by um, Otta Palmer. Otta Palmer. Um, this is one of those sci-fi series that people always talk about who like, I don't know, vote for the Hugos and stuff like that. as like one of those, not hidden gems, but underrated series that people don't give a try often enough. And so we're going to buddy read this in the Discord kind of slowly. It'll be like our first series read along, and then the second one's going to be closer to when the Lotus Empire comes out for the Burning Kingdoms trilogy. And I'm hoping I really like this. I have the audiobook, I have the physical, I think I even have the Kindle. I have all of the ways to consume this story, and I'm just hoping for a really fun world to discover, because that's part of the reasons I picked it up, but also that there is some other nebulous factor, whether it's plot or characters, or maybe it is just the cool world that makes me super invested and in falling into this world. I don't know if that's what will happen. I don't know what this is about. I picked it up purely based off its clout, okay? <laughs> Which can be a bad decision, but here we are, and we're gonna body read it because I do think it's gonna be one of those sci-fi series that will be enhanced with, you know, discussing with people, but also, you know, maybe some, like, uh, what's it called? Accountability. Yes, accountability, where if I get a little too confused, I can push through. Oh, I just opened to a page and there was a chart. That's only slightly concerning that there was a table. It's not mixed media. It's just I happened to open to a page with a chart. Anyways, um, and then speaking of the second book on my physical TBR that I'm going to get to, and it's another new release. It's coming out at the end of March, and I am very excited. Angel of Indian Lake by Stephen Graham Jones. Yeah, really excited. So I have a physical arc of this one. I actually don't have an e-arc or an audiobook or anything like that, but I've physically read Don't Feel the Reaper, so I have no issues. I feel physically reading this, and I actually physically read most of My Heart is a Chainsaw, and I'm just excited. I am hoping Jade gets some sort of weird cathartic happy ending. I don't know if that's gonna happen, um, but this is the end of this horror trilogy, which you don't get many of those, and I'm just really pumped considering how much I love the first two. And so yes, this is very much on my list. And like I said, it accomplishes my task of, these are two books on my physical TBR that I will at least 
pick up and hopefully I'm in the mood for them. And if not, hopefully I know to either to get rid of them or find another mood. And I'm really hoping this does not go the Empire of Silence route. <laughs> if you were here last year, we tried to read Empire of Silence in my Discord and um, we all pretty much bounced off of it. That's one thing that's accidentally happened in Patreon is we all, kind, we don't have all the same taste, but we all have similar patience levels, I feel, for certain sort of quirks that can exist in books. It's It's been relatively nice. Um, and then I read 100,000 Kingdoms last month. It was so good. And Laura really liked it. Yay. <laughs> I knew I would really like it. And I knew I would want to continue the series eventually. And she's looking to potentially read the next book in March. And so we're going to read Broken Kingdoms. This is my shiny UK copy because I just didn't want to keep moving my US copy. I have two copies of these. I don't know why. Part of it was I could only get these covers in the UK versions for a while. And it was before I understood the differences between them. And these are very shiny and they're short. These are actually relatively floppy UK books. Um, and then I was hunting for these covers in the US versions because I don't like the new covers. I don't. I really like the weird tree city stuff and the face in the background motif that we get for all of them. I like that. I like the colors, the yellow, the blue, the red. I like all those colors. The new ones that are just like ceilings, I think they blend more into the Broken Earth trilogy kind of aesthetic, but it doesn't, I don't, I don't like it. Anyways, this is I think my favorite. In the Inheritance Trilogy, it follows Ore. She is blind and an artist, but she can still kind of interact and see the world in a very unique way. And she runs into a character who is just this like homeless man on the street who is more than he appears. And she takes him in and chaos and politics ensue in a way that is very unpredictable. And I really like it. Um, yeah, I just, I, I, I really like this book. Does this have the end thing that I was thinking? Yes, it does. Some of the versions, so if you have the bind up of the Inheritance Trilogy, it does not have all of the like appendix stuff that you can get from the standalones. And I only think that's really important for the third book, at least for me, I had an intense emotional catharsis by reading the extra story at the end of the third book. And then of course reading the novella. I I love this trilogy. I will update my should you reads after this read, like reread. So that's on my list. And I guess another reread, we'll get the rereads out of the way. Words of Radiance, I will not be reading from this copy. First of all, this copy is falling apart. This is um, a first edition <laughs> of it. It's actually, I don't even think completely canon anymore. He changed slightly one of the scenes, I think at one point. Um, but uh, the binding struggles in this book, but this is the copy I have and I love it. Um, it is the reason why when people ever get the like fancy new dusk jackets with the all four of them and stuff like that, I can't do that because mine is too big. It's before they started using the Bible paper and binding it differently. Um, regardless of the quality of the physical book, I am probably going to start my reread of Words of Radiance. We have our discussion on this coming Sunday on Stephanie's channel of Way of Kings. Really loved that reread. So itching to get into Words of Radiance as soon as possible. Don't know if I'll get through it all of March or if it will just be like most of March. I don't know. I'm not trying to rush it. That's my thing this year with my Stormlight, Stormlight, <laughs> Stormlight read along for our whole group is we're all taking it at the pace that we want to with presumably plenty of time for us to read all four before December so that no one feels like rushed because you can kind of very easily be burnt out if you push yourself faster than you want to go in Stormlight. So it's not to say that you can't read a Stormlight book in like a week and be happy. It's just for me, that's not the case. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. It's usually I think about a month ish. And that was like before I was reading other books at the same time. And like I've discussed, my life's a little busy. I'm using my brain for a lot of things. So we'll see. And the last like for sure thing that I'm going to pick up is for Jess Owens nonfiction book club, we've picked the nonfiction living resistance, I believe it's by an indigenous author. And it's kind of pivoting off of that theme that we started looking at with Angela Davis's freedom is a constant struggle, just trying to educate ourselves more on different ways to, you know, have resistance to keep going. And like, in this case, I think from an indigenous lens, I don't know much about it, but I have the audiobook. And I will definitely be picking it up for book club because that's what I do. Jess tells me what to read and I read it and we discuss it. That's that's our relationship for that book club. And then the things that I might get to that are on my Kindle that have me excited, especially because I am kind of excited about how I want to do my recent release roundups, even though I, I knew the first one wouldn't do well because it's like, oh, it's two sequel novellas and no one wants to click on a video with those, which is true. But doesn't matter. I'm excited about the idea of like after reading two to three new releases, going to see what other people have thought and making a video on that for people. So like The Tainted Cup, um, Bride is one I read recently. And then I think one of the next ones could be Those Beyond the Wall by Micaiah Johnson, who wrote The Space Between Worlds, which is a book I love. And that one has some contentious reviews. 
I've already been told by people who love it and who hate it, and I don't know where I'm gonna fall, and these people also love the first book, so I'm very scared, but I also am just hoping, hoping. So this is one where I know there's a mystery. It's in Ash, which is the bad, not the bad city, but it has less resources than the city behind the wall. So that's why it's called Those Beyond the Wall. I'm excited about it. I have it. I'm hoping I love it. I'm, I'm hoping I do. And if I do love it, potentially she could be an author I reach out to, to maybe interview. Unsure. I want to make sure I love the book first. <laughs> It'd be really awkward to invite her and be like, I really loved your first book. That second book, though, that doesn't seem very polite. I also, I don't know if I'll read his new book, but I've been, I read a lot of novellas in February, as you're going to see in my wrap up, or if you have been keeping track with my Friday reads, which if you've been keeping track, you're doing better than me. I haven't been barely keeping track. <laughs> I make my Friday reads and I don't write it down anywhere. And so then I have to kind of look at my Friday reads if I ever get behind on my story graph and be like, what did I read? <laughs> Not the most organized in my bookish life these days, using all of that for other things. But um, there was the novella last year, Feed Them Silence, that I have the audiobook of that I wouldn't mind checking out. I think it's more psychological horror leading. And then there's the new novella short novel that comes out this year that I also have an arc of, so I wouldn't mind consuming that. So Lee Mandelo might happen this month. Don't know which one, maybe both, who knows. And the last things I'll bring up as potential maybes, <laughs> because I am chaos on Maine. Um, <laughs> one is I never know when I'll do it. I might read a Verkosigan book. It could happen. I read one in March, wasn't anticipating, not March, February. And I read one in January, really wasn't anticipating that quick of a turnaround time, but it happened. So there's always a chance that I read the next one. <laughs> But I might not. Uh, what ends up happening is it's like one of the chillest read-alongs in my Discord where I read a book and then I put the next channel open and then other people who've been slowly rereading it, usually most of these people are rereading the Verkoskin series, are like, you know, I think it's time that I read this. And then I, within a month, usually also read it because then there's little spoiler blurbs for me to click on. So usually when I pick them up is controlled by like Laura and... <laughs> There's a username whose name starts with a J that I'm blanking on how to pronounce. Like whenever they start, or maybe Kaz, whenever they start typing things, I'm like, oh, I guess maybe I should pick it up. Should I? And that's what happened this month. I really wasn't planning on reading Setacanda, but I did. So I could be reading Ethan's of Anos. Is that what it's called? I don't know. Here, here's a cover. I could be reading that this month. I could not. I don't know. Um, it, that, that's my, that's a chaotic, really well-functioning buddy read that's happening. <laughs> And then the true my toxic personality is coming through. I was not having fun reading Reaper's Gale because I was too confused and I don't think I was supposed to be confused. Okay. And so I decided I was going to stop that for now. Pause that hard. And then I was like, you know, when I have time, just reread Malazan from the beginning. You'll have more context. So it'll still be a fun reread of the first six books. And then just try not to get far behind. Just try to make sure you're always reading one every other month when you decide to do that. And I initially, when I had this thought tree, was like, yeah, and you'll just wait till next year, 2025. But then I picked up Gardens of the Moon in February. So I guess I'm rereading it right now-ish, <laughs> but very slowly. Like it's a lot like Stormlight where it's just like, I'm not holding myself to anything. I'm just going to try and make sure I don't go weeks without picking it up. That sort of thing. And Gardens of the Moon is so fun. It is so fun. Um, it's so different <laughs> than the other books in the series. And it's re really fun because my first time reading it, and there's like a vlog out there of like my first experience with that book. I was like, what is happening? And I'm like connecting dots and I'm like having a fun time. And this time I'm still very what is happening because there's still so much, even seven books in that I do not understand. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that I do understand. And there's a lot of stuff like dramatic irony that I know, of, like, oh, I know where this character arc goes. And that's so bittersweet here. Like, for those who know, I was just with Perrin and he just went home and he saw his sisters, Tavare and Felicin, or Tavor and Felicin. I don't know how to say the elder sister's name, but if you've read the series, you know how important they are for other books and what their storylines are. And it's just like, whoa, whoa. It's such a small scene, but it's just like, ah. Anyways. So that might happen. Who knows? That's the TBR. Those are the tentative plans. Really leaning into rereading this year, apparently. And also something I've noticed and maybe something I need to figure out how to break. And technically this month, I am reading two books by authors I haven't read from before. But in the past, I've been way better at reading from authors I haven't read from before. And lately, new releases, I'm just picking from authors I've already read who have new stuff coming out. And rereads are obviously people I have read before. 
So I'm definitely very comfort zone oriented this year, which I don't think is inherently bad, but I just wanted to recognize that that's a thing I'm doing. <laughs> Let me know what your plans are for this upcoming month. Um, I know there's Realmathon happening, so if you're participating in that, let me know. If you just want to leave an emoji to let me know you're here. Ooh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Lightning? Lightning. Too late the lightning. There we go. Whenever I don't know, I just look at my stack of books near me and see if anything triggers something. Otherwise, like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.